and welcome to the Civic Engagement and Outreach Workshop. I am Yolanda Petrosky, the Civic Engagement and Outreach Chair for this administration. Today we're going to talk about flags. The upcoming Memorial Day marks the start of our flag waving season. It will be followed by many others that you know, notably Flag Day, June 14, Independence Day, July 4th, Labor Day, September 6th, and Veterans Day, November 11th. Betsy Ross is credited with making the first American flag. Old Glory is its nickname. CFWC past president, Tammy Gunsler, and Valley Barnes, who was public affairs citizenship chairman at the time, put together a wonderful video. I'm sorry, it's a wonderful booklet. I got video on the brain today. The booklet is called Honor Our Nation's Flag, which is still available through promotional sales. This is a booklet that definitely should be in your club's library of Federation materials. As you'd expect, the booklet covers days to, co uh, to display the flag, answers questions on how the flag should be treated, and how to obtain a flag flown over the Capitol, among other things. You're now in for a treat as you're going to hear motivational speaker Jimmy Weldon's description of I am the flag. In his heyday, you could hear a pin drop as he strode around a room delivering this speech. In today's 2018 YouTube video, he'll be seated as this patriotic American will be 98 in September. Jimmy Weldon, please. Can you hear? No. Sorry about that. Stop, 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 stop. I do this occasionally. Forget to turn the sound on. Sorry, Yolanda. No problem. Let me get him backed up. And get him cute again. Hello, my name's Jimmy Weldon. You're saying who cares? I'm gonna really shock you. You grew up with me and know who I am. 53 years ago, I did the voice of Yaki Doodle in the Yogi Bear Show. You remember this little duck named Yaki Doodle and his best friend is Chopper, a great big bulldog. Fibber Fox is chasing him down the road. You hear him holler, Help! Chopper! Chopper's arrested me! He says, oh. Oh. Gets in front of him and then he says, Yaki, now that you're safe, tell me, where's your mama? And he always looked up sad and said, I don't have no mama. Would you be my mama? Hard to realize, but that was me. I was in Patton's Third Army Combat Engineers, attached to the group that liberated the Booking Wall Concentration Camp. It's a long time ago. I told this to a little group of middle school children in Burbank, where I live. And a little boy in the back of the room said, Ah, that never happened. And I just screamed out, Don't say that! I was there! Later, I talked to one of the largest service clubs in Long Beach. A little man came out of the audience with a yarmulke on the back of his head. He said, Jimmy, I'm Rabbi Kane. I was at Booking Wall Concentration Camp. We stood there hugging, crying in the middle of the room. My passion today is talking to young people about America because they don't teach the things I talk about in school today. Ah, but that's enough of that. Let me tell you about what I'm so thrilled about. I have a special program that was used on the USS Kennedy in the Persian Gulf during the Iraq War for 4,500 sailors. I was so surprised and thankful, I cried when they told me they were using it every day before they started the Pledge of Allegiance. This is what I use when I'm talking to young people. I am the flag of the United States of America, conceived in the dreams of liberty and the hopes of freedom. I was designed by the hands of Betsy Ross, and her sewing basket was my cradle. 
Though I was never an orphan, I was adopted by the Continental Congress in 1777 and proclaimed the national emblem of a nation newly born on this continent, fighting valiantly for survival and destined to bring to all mankind a new concept in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I rode with Ethan Allen and the Green Mountain Boys at the Battle of Fort Bennington. I was flown above the decks of old Ironsides and the mass of Yankee clippers. <laughs> I blazed the trail with Daniel Boone and Davy Crockett. I led the settlers coming west and crossed Death Valley in a covered wagon. Once I fell to the ground at Custer's last stand to Little Bighorn, there were no living hands left to pick me up. But I galloped up the slopes of San Juan Hill with Colonel Teddy Roosevelt and his Rough Riders in the United States Cavalry. I was carried through the halls of Montezuma onto the shores of Tripoli by the United States Marine Corps. I stayed with the boys till it was over over there. On the battlefields of the Marne, Chateau Thierry, Saint Mihiel in the Argonne Forest, I saw many of the youth in manhood of our nation fall and lie still in death. They had given their last full measure of blood. The war was over for them forever but I kept my lonely vigil over their graves and stayed to watch the poppies grow amid the crosses, row on row in Flanders Field. I was raised by six brave Marines and sailors during the hell of Iwo Jima in the final hours of World War II. I haven't changed much in 240 years. I still have my original 13 stripes but as each state came in the Union, a new star was proudly added to the constellation of my blue field. Start with 13, now there are 50. I've draped the caskets of our nation's heroes and borne to their last resting place the bodies of presidents, generals, admirals, humble privates, and the unknown soldier. Wherever free men gather, Wherever there's justice, equality, faith, hope, charity, truth, and brotherly love, there too am I. When you stand with your hand over your heart and recite the Pledge of Allegiance to me, don't merely mouth the words, but think of what they mean to you and mean what you say. And when you come to the phrase, One Nation Under God, Remember, it matters not what your religious belief. It only matters that you hold your faith dear, that you practice it daily, and you preserve it forever. History will never write my obituary, for I am the stars and stripes forever. I'm old glory. I'm your flag. I am you. Isn't that wonderful? I get teary-eyed every time I hear him. And uh, as you heard me say, he's going to be 98 in September. His office or mailing address is Encino, California. Uh, so I might look into maybe we'll start a happy birthday Jimmy Weldon campaign for September. More on that later. But now I want to tell you about uh, some unique projects regarding our American flag that our clubs have reported. First is a pocket flag project that started in 2001 as a Club Scout, Cub Scout project. Check out the website at pocket flagproject.com for details. Basically, four by five inch flags are folded into a triangle, which ends up approximately one by two inches, and it is slipped into a clear three by three plastic bag. This bag also contains a note of appreciation, and it will fit easily into the chest or arm pocket of a military uniform. 
And this has been approved by the military for uh, the um, deployed people to carry it on their person. When properly folded, only the stars will show on both sides of the triangle. The website does stress that the flags are for deployed and deploying personnel only. Supplies can be purchased from their website, Amazon and craft stores. There is a video tutorial on the website which details folding instructions. Yorba Linda and the Ebo Club of Irvine report working on this project. Another is the Remembrance Star Project. Embroidered stars are cut from properly retired US flags and placed in a small Ziploc bag with a little, whoop, little note that reads, I am part of an American flag that has flown over the USA. I can no longer fly. The sun and winds caused me to become tattered and torn. Please carry me as a reminder that you are not forgotten. Starsforourtroops.org is the site you'll want to visit for more information. You can either send them stars that you've cut out, you can send them American flags, or you can purchase supplies to distribute. $5 is a suggested donation for a package of 50 stars. The order form does ask to whom you will be distributing the stars and they will mail a star with a message from you free to currently serving military. If you fill out the form on their website, Simi Valley and Covina and the Wasco Women's Club have supported this project. I ordered a star for my soon to be grandson and they sent me this note and they send him a little note with a message inside from you to them. And there's a special American flag you might want to consider. It's one that shows support of the police, fire, and military all in one flag. Anley.com, that's A-N-L-E-Y.com, offers a wide variety of flags and decals to display. The decal that I'm referring to is a black and white U.S. flag that bears three color stripes, blue for the police, green for the military, and red for our fire heroes. Made of 3M vinyl, the decal is waterproof and fade resistant with easy to follow instructions for placing on your windows, car or home, or anywhere you wish to display your support. The cost is $5.95 for three. Now, one of the most meaningful flag waving events I've ever encountered is welcoming home an honor flight. The pandemic called, called a halt to flights this past year, but things are looking brighter now. Here with a brief message is honor flight founder, Craig Van Doren. He will be followed by a KTLA segment that you won't want to miss. And it's a good idea to have a tissue handy. I want to thank you for attending this workshop today, and I hope you found it beneficial and interesting. And my heartfelt thanks go to Debbie and, and Reggie for your help this morning. Thank you. Hi, I'm Craig Van Dorn, Chairman and Co-Founder of Honor Flight Southland. I'd like to welcome you to your virtual convention. And in case you don't know, Honor Flight's mission is to take our most senior veterans to Washington, D.C. for a free three-day trip to spend time at and enjoy the memorials that are built in their honor. We've been recipients of Women's Club's generosity as well as from others, and we've been able to take 371 veterans to D.C. for their tour of honor. We still have World War II veterans as well as Korea and Vietnam vets waiting to go. As of today, we have 263 veterans on our waiting list. And although we've been grounded through 2020 and 2021 due to COVID, we already have three missions planned for 2022. So I urge all 10,157 members of the 229 women's clubs to reach out 
and contact your local Honor Flight hub and assist any way possible. They can all use help. If you go to www.honorflight.org, which is the national headquarters website for all Honor Flight hubs, you can locate the Honor Flight hub nearest you. Or you can reach me for assistance directly at 949-310-6143 or at C. Van Doren, that's C-V-A-N-D-O-R-E-N, at cox.net. Thanks for all your help and best wishes to you all. The websites will be in the handout, which you'll receive on Tuesday. Start of honor flight. Those four-seater planes soon turned into jumbo jets on the tarmac, taking off with dozens of those donned a U.S. uniform. Hey, Joe, good job, eh? Our Captain Van Doren enlisted with Honor Flight in San Diego, where he volunteered to be what's called a guardian on two trips. He got hooked and decided to start this branch in Southern California. Since 2015, Honor Flight Southland has taken 260 vets and their guardians on missions where they're treated like the heroes they've always been. Many say they've rarely felt appreciated. The organization has brought in about $750,000 for the cross-country call of duty, but each flight costs about $75,000. That includes airfare, hotel, food, and transportation. And while raising donations for this red, white, and blue cause is challenging, Van Doren says it's a battle he refuses to lose. I was not in the military myself. I couldn't serve, so this was kind of my way of giving back and continuing to give back. And as long as I see a veteran that wants to come back to Washington, D.C. that has never been back here to see their memorial, I'm going to keep working. Since Honor Flight was created in 2005, 180,000 vets have made this touching cross-country journey. Today, more than 27,000 men and women are on the waiting list, but they can't take off without your help. I'm excited to see the whole thing. It's a wonderful operation. Ready for takeoff, the veterans anxiously await Flight 542 to the Capitol, where they'll tour the nation's war memorials, many for the first time. You can see the excitement in their eyes and history in their faces, all with different stories to tell. There are 35 World War II veterans on this honor flight. The youngest is 90, the oldest 100 years old. Every vet on the honor flight trip gets a guardian often a family member, but many times the military men and women are paired up with volunteers, like Tony Maricino, who's been matched with 92-year-old George Rothman, a U.S. Navy vet. They answered a calling that could have changed America. It could be a different country, a different language, and went and did their job, didn't ask for anything, came back home and went back to work. They're a different breed of person. They truly are just tough as nails. As we soon learn, the itinerary will be full of sentiment and surprises. In the day, before you had email, before you had cell phones, you didn't have texting. You had the best kind of all. First, a special delivery of thoughtful handwritten letters and cards from loved ones and local students that perks everyone up in their seats. This is from Kim. Hi, Uncle Floyd. Thank you so much for your service. The touching tour may be meant for the vets, but Carolyn Geiger says it's really her honor to travel as her dad's guardian, U.S. Naval Officer Floyd Hutchins. Mom never wrote, she never was much of a writer, so this makes up for it, which is awesome. For Army Sergeant Hal Katz, the memories are still fresh. It was really nice to get the letters and find out how some young people feel actually almost brought tears to my eyes that we do recognize that uh, we were fighting for freedom there some of them said we're still about fighting for freedom now active duty military and other volunteers line up to salute and welcome the veterans how's it going jay relishing the moment shaking every hand the gratitude is contagious Passengers and even strangers stop to thank them. Thank you guys, thank you. The moment overwhelming for onlookers as the vets start to not only see, but feel the recognition they've longed for all these years. Very few times have I been thanked. 
and the feeling never gets old. It is as fresh as, as the very first time. For me to see this and to see the welcome that these guys, these men and women get, it's uh, just incredible for me. I never get tired of it. It was emotional for everyone, but the tears didn't stop there. Coming up, the patriotic and memorable moments when these veterans visit Washington, D.C., some for the first time. KTLA's Honor Flight is just getting started. Helping to tell the stories of the 16 million Americans who heroically served during World War II, the planes on the Wings of Freedom tour are flying history. Welcome back. I'm Casey Montoya, and this is KTLA's special Honor Flight. Now, wheels up for the tribute of a lifetime. With his proud daughter capturing every priceless moment, 90-year-old Navy veteran Ben Reed finally gets the hero's welcome he's been waiting for. The sailor served as a U.S. Navy coxswain in the South Pacific, and while looking for ways to commend her father's time as an active ally, Michelle McCormick heard about the honor flight a few years back, but feared the waiting list would be too long. We got on the list. We were actually supposed to like maybe go in October, uh -huh. and then they had a last-minute cancellation, and here we are within a week. The petty officer feels lucky to make today's logbook and be given this rare opportunity to tour our nation's historic monuments. Yeah. February 19th, we descend upon that island. 40 Marines, by the way, and they have the stars and stripes with them, and they plant that flag. First stop, Arlington National Cemetery, where more than 400,000 active duty service members, veterans, and their families are laid to rest. The symbolic changing of the guard ceremony at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is a special moment for the father-daughter duo. Next stop, the Women in Military Service for America Memorial, then the U.S. Air Force Memorial. But on the momentous journey, it's the World War II Memorial that's the most memorable and moving. A welcome complete in period costume. Ben beams as he gets a thankful kiss on the cheek. As thoughts travel back in time, emotions of today swell to the surface. Kind of over overwhelming, especially for old people. Old people are not supposed to be emotional, but we are. This has been a great trip. I wish that every vet could make it. And as the man who served not for self, but for country confides, he's only been thanked a few times for risking his life. There is no doubt this is a moment that will be cherished far after this family returns home. I think for the first time in a long time, he's feeling like people truly appreciate him and his service. I'm so thankful that he's had the experience to know that Americans do support our veterans and they do appreciate what they've done. These planes and veterans made history. Also on board mission number seven, a Purple Heart recipient and a woman who met her husband while caring for wounded soldiers. They're thanking me, and yet I think that I did so little. In a time of battle and bloodshed, the war brought 98-year-old veteran Nikki Smith love. At that time, the barracks were full of women. Everyone was young and eager, followed orders. We did what we could. I actually nursed my husband-to-be. When he got well, we dated and he ended up married. Decades after saying I do to her military man and raising their two children, the former nurse gets a surprising call. That they were building a women's memorial. I became a representative for the state of California. This thick of letters from you. It's here today thanks to this woman, Wilma Vaught. She's the first woman to deploy with an Air Force bomber unit 
plus the first female to reach the rank of brigadier general from the comptroller field. Vought didn't want women's role in the military to go unnoticed, so she pushed for the structure, which was finished in 1997. Nikki's son, Bruce Campbell, who spent four years in the Navy, says he knew this trip would be one no one could forget. This may be the last major adventure of her life. I was glad that I was able to engineer this for her. I was, I was really happy that, that I was able to give her this opportunity. While some fondly reminisce, others recall the challenges they faced. I didn't feel so proud when I came out. 92-year-old Al Wallace tells us being black gave him a different experience in the field. So we weren't treated quite fairly. We did what we were ordered to do and try to serve the country to the best of our knowledge. So I was in the Cooks and Stewart's branch and I had to serve the officers. There was just a lot of bitterness there after we served the country and then we didn't get the honor we deserved. But he didn't let that change him. He remained positive, a quality his son most admires about his father. So I fortunately was able to raise three children that I'm very proud of. They have achieved much more in life than I could ever have thought of. When I was on the ship, the doctor looked at my hand and he said, you're going to lose your hand. In February of 1944, the U.S. Navy lieutenant was the chief navigator on a landing ship tank, or LST, when a torpedo hit. They were 50 miles offshore of Anzio when a piece of exploding deck plate cut off part of his hand when he was just 22 years old. The first torpedo took 60 feet off the bow, and that floated off by itself. Stayed afloat for 24 hours, and we had a fire that was tremendous. Everybody that was there was burned. We lost seven out of 12 officers and about 46 enlisted men. He was awarded a Purple Heart for his actions that day. Although he shared his war stories his entire life, he says seeing one thing on this trip makes him finally feel complete. For years I've looked to see, did anybody build a model? But here it is, this is wonderful, I'd never seen it before. Third class petty officer Bernie Couch was on the USS Anzio during World War II. We traveled 190,000 nautical miles. That's five times around the Earth at the equator. And we were in 10 major engagements. He says there were many close calls during that time. The sister ship, the Macon Island, took a torpedo. One missed us five feet. 700 men went down. 170, I think, survived. No officer even got off the ship. The highlight of his trip, seeing this anchor for the last time. It's the anchor off his ship. His daughter Carolyn was honored to escort her father on this trip of a lifetime. To come to this place and visit their memorials and maybe get some closure of the war. I know a lot of men saw a lot of things in the war that they can't talk about. It just makes you appreciate what these men did for our country. Like our veterans, these planes have stories to tell. Coming up, our crew gets a history lesson at Fort McHenry, plus a heartwarming welcome home. KTLA's Honor Flight has one more stop. These aircraft had to make it through enemy fire, endless attacks, and harrowing weather, including sub-zero temperatures. On our last day in D.C., a cold front moved in, but nothing could dampen the spirit of these veterans who have waited a lifetime for the recognition and respect they say they've longed for. This flag is different than any other flag you've seen. It has 15 stripes and 15 stars. Bundled up in blankets and raincoats, these World War II veterans surround this massive American flag, which has become part of an unexpected history lesson. So this flag flew on that flagpole, and that's the way it looked 200 years ago. It's a familiar song, our national anthem. And although most of us know the words, many have never stopped to think about what it means. It was a poem written by Francis Scott Key after witnessing British ships bombard Fort McHenry in 1814. 25 hours the British attack the fort. They fire mortars that are 200 pound bombs, bombs bursting in air. They had a rocket ship, rockets red glare. Gave proof to the night that our flag was We've heard the words a thousand times, but didn't recognize them. 
97-year-old Mac Edwards was a U.S. Army sergeant in India during the war. He says after hearing the story of the Star-Spangled Banner, he's even more proud to be a veteran. A lot of old hands there rolling up that flag. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light. Even in the cold, windy rain, these veterans toured the fort and sat reverently watching a ceremonial flag change, recreating what took place on September 14, 1814, signaling American victory in the Battle of Baltimore, soaking in a triumphant moment in our nation's history. Just like the war that lasted six years, this trip will not soon be forgotten. And now, coming in for a landing like never before. A hero's homecoming as these World War II veterans return to LAX. More than 100 people waiting with signs, flags, and a lot of love to thank them one more time. Heartwarming reunions spotted across the terminal, including this one, where a vet greets his wife of 65 years. Guardians and veterans overcome with emotion as the trip comes to an end. Wonderful experience for him. <laughs> yeah. I think that he felt just totally excited and uh, really appreciated. Many vets not only surprised to see the crowd, but even more surprised to see so many of their loved ones waiting. It's the most wonderful trip I've ever been on. It's uh, unforgettable. I just want to say hello, uh, good, thank you very much for all the people that made this possible. I'll never forget it. While this honor flight has touched down for a smooth landing, your donation can help the next one take off. In the sky and on the ground, watch out for the Wings of Freedom tour. And remember our call of duty today. Keep the message and the spirit of the greatest generation alive. Thanks for watching.
I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, For the Troops is located in Simi Valley, uh, California. And I'm sure that's um, familiar to many in, in the TAD district. They have a gala or pre-pandemic time. They had a, a fundraising gala. And the last one I attended, I met Ernie Medrano, who was interviewed um, on this video. He has since passed, but uh, we delighted in, in hearing his stories and posing for pictures with him. And I hope that um, for the honor flights will be as important to you as it is to me. As you heard Craig say, there are 263 on the waiting list waiting to go and they need money. So do what you can. There are eight hubs in California and there should be one close to you that you can either go or you can mail like the, the cards that they read on the honor, on the honor flights during mail call. Um, would be welcomed. If you're not close to one, you can support it that way. I see there are questions. Do I call for them or just the host? Um, I don't know. Our time is up at this time because we do, uh, uh, if you want to take a few questions, uh, Debbie, are we on a strict turn off time or can we go on a little longer? Uh, you can go on a little longer and I would certainly take the two questions that are pending. Okay, go ahead. Um, Linda, unmute uh, yourself and ask your question, and then we'll go to Elisa. Yeah, um, yeah, Alonda, I just wondered, do you know what the process would be to try to encourage GFWC to adopt um, Honor Flight nationally as one of our affiliates, you know, similar to Shot at Life or well, Canines for Companions? I know that they they do list Honor Flight. I don't know uh, that it would be an affiliate, how, how to change it to an affiliate status. Mm -hmm but they do endorse Honor Flight. Yeah, yeah, they do. I was just wondering if it was anything in the works or if you'd heard anything. Um, no, I have not heard anything. Thank, Thank you, Linda. Elisa, do you wanna go ahead and um, mute yourself? Thank you. Good morning. Just real quick, I'm really interested in purchasing those um, uh, pocket flag, but like uh, Yolanda said, that it's only for uh, deployed military. Is there a way? someone can help me purchase it because I really want I'm interested because what happened is when one time the reason I came across that that I, I think I find it interesting is when we're walking at the mall and my husband is wearing a veteran's hat or something somebody go chase us on the mall and hand him that flag and I said I think that was a great token because uh, my husband's really get surprised said oh my gosh and the lady just handed it to her to him and he said thank you for your service so i thought they said it's a good idea if we can do that if we're walking around and we see someone that's wearing this you know um flag but then they don't allow me to purchase it they said i have to kind of like uh say to where it's supposed to go uh the pocket flag project is for deployed and deploying only yeah. The stars yeah. for our troops is for everyone, every military person. So that's the difference between the two organizations. All and right. the websites will be on, on my handout, which you'll get through Quick Bites. All right, I'll wait for the handout. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, I see Patsy's um, hand up, and then that will be the last question. Patsy, you wanna unmute yourself and ask the question? Patsy, I mean, thank you. Yes, uh, I think um, Yolanda answered my question. I wanted to. Okay, thank you very much. To, to, uh, thank you all for attending. Yes. Thank you. Um, then I guess that is um, it. And I want to really thank Yolanda very much. Do you have any closing remarks or are we ready to? Uh, we're ready to move on. Thank you all for attending.